Good morning grade 12s. Welcome to week number 7. In this lesson we're going to be looking at exponential and logarithmic functions. So first we're going to revise some of our little rules for exponents. So we know that a to the 0 is 1. So that means that anything to the 0 is 1. I can say 6 to the 0 equals 1. 7 to the 0 equals 1. Anything to the 0 equals 1 a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. Example, if I have x cubed times x squared, that becomes x to the 3 plus 2, which is x to the 5. And if you just want to remember why that is, this bit here becomes x times x times x. And this bit here becomes x times x. And if you add them up, you end up with x to the power of 5. So that's where you get that rule from. The next two rules, remember that this bracket means that we multiply across it. So for example, if we've got x cubed squared, that would be the same as x to the 3 times 2, which equals 6. And again, the reasoning behind this is, this is the same as saying x cubed times x cubed. And we can use the fact that if we've got common bases, what do you do with exponents? We add them, so it becomes x times 3 plus 3, which is x to the 6. So that's x to the 6. Over here, if we have got a, b to the power of n, then this n belongs to everything in the bracket. And therefore it becomes a to the n, b to the n. So let's say, for example, what x, y squared to the power of 3. That becomes x cubed times by y squared cubed, which becomes x cubed. And then what do we do? What, do we do? what did we just learn? We learned that we multiply across the brackets. So 2 times 3 is 6. So that becomes x cubed y to the 6. OK, the next two rules, a to the m divided by a to the n is equal to the a minus m. So the example for this would be, for example, let's got x to the 4 over x squared. What's going to happen? We are going to divide, means we subtract. So it's x to the 4 minus 2, which is x squared. And then again, if you just want to know why that works, let's just check. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, all over how many? 2, 1, 2, cancel, 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 cancel. And what are you left with? x squared. Excellent. Now just as much as everything that we're multiplying, if we know that a, b to the n is equal to a to the n, b to the n. But the real rule, remember, is that everything that's to the power of n, if the whole bracket is to the power of n, this n belongs to everything in the bracket. Therefore, it doesn't matter if you're multiplying like here or if you're dividing. If it's a, b to the power of n, it means it's a to the n over b to the n. So for example, again, um, let's say, let's change the lessons for a bit. Let's say we've got t squared over s cubed all to the power of 2. That means it's going to be t squared all to the power of 2 all over s cubed all to the power of 2. What do we do across the brackets? We multiply, so it becomes t to the power of 4 over s 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, let's look at something more interesting. Now we're looking at our negative exponents. The negative exponent means what? a to the negative n means 1 over a to the n. That's what it means. So if we've got a to the negative n over b, then what happens is that we actually end up with 1 over, we take it down to the bottom, a to the n. But this negative actually means that we're taking it across the fraction line. So if we have a negative at the bottom, we bring it to the top and it becomes a positive. So in other words, 1 over a to the negative n is just equal to a to the n over your implied 1. Okay, so therefore if we've got a over b to negative n, it's just going to be a times by, bring this all up to the top, b to the n. And again, if you have a bracket with an exponent, this exponent belongs to everything in the bracket. So therefore we've got a, b, all to the negative n is equal to a to the negative n over b to the negative n. But remember, what does this mean? This means it goes to the bottom, and that means it goes to the top, so it becomes b to the n over a to the n. 
Now let's just recap the difference between exponents and logs. Remember the inverse of an exponent is a log. Your exponential equation is x equals a to the y. And then if we want to change it to a log, it becomes y equals log x base a. Log x base a. Where a and y is greater than 0 and a it does not equal 1. Right. Now let's look at the log rules because we need these as well. Log a b base b is basically going to be the same as log a base b plus log b base b. So let's say for example I've got log 6 base 4. That could be written as log of 3 times 2 base 4, right? Which would mean it would be log 3 base 4 plus log 2 base 4, okay? Similarly, if I've got log of, let's say, 8 divided by 3, all to the power of base 2, then this would be the same as saying, and that's not a plus, my bad, that's a minus. So it's log 8 base 2 minus log 3 base 2. So when you're multiplying, you're adding, and when you're dividing, you are subtracting. Please make sure you understand that. Now, log a base n, what happens to this n? It comes to the front. So let's say, for example, I've got log um, 8. That can be written as log 2 cubed. And then what happens is I can take the 3 and bring it to the front. That becomes 3 log 2. What's nice about logs is we can break them up as long as they've got the same basis. So in other words, if I've got log 9 base 6, I could bring this up into log 9 all over log 6. And this base here, as long as it's the same, we can do that. Okay? And log a base a is always equal to 1. It doesn't matter what it is. If I've got log 43 base 43, that answer is going to be 1. End of story. So now let's look at an inverse of an exponential graph example. We've done this already using the previous examples of exponential graphs, but I just want to make sure that you understand that logs and exponents are inverse of each other. So in this case, we're looking at the graph y is equal to half x. So again, what we're going to do is just to make it easy for ourselves, we're going to substitute in some values. So when x is naught, anything to the naught is 1. So when x is naught, I mean when x is naught, y is 1, yes. When x is 1, y is a half. When x is 1, y is a half. And then let's talk about this when x is minus 1. So that case we've got y is equal to half to the negative 1, which is the same as saying 2, because remember what the minus means is we flip it. So then when x is minus 1, y is 2. When x is minus 2, y is going to be 4. So this graph actually looks like that. And that is my exponential function, okay? And that is my y is equal to a half to the power of x. Let's talk about the domain and range. You can see that the asymptote again is y equals naught. So therefore the domain doesn't have any effect of that, but the domain is how far it stretches along the x-axis. So you can see it goes all the way to minus infinity. It's just going to keep going up. It's going to do it slowly, but it's going to get there to minus infinity. And this is going to carry on to infinity. So domain is x is an element of real values. Now let's look Oops, sorry, now let's carry on. Let's look at the range. The range is every number above the x-axis. So the range is going to be y has got to be bigger than 0. And then y is an element of real values. Now let's draw the inverse. So what do we do? What do we do to draw the inverse? We have to swap the x and y and then solve for y, right? So x is equal to a half to the power of y. Therefore, y is equal to log x base a half. Okay. 
but now there's an easy way to draw this if you know that this is the inverse and I just want to show it to you again let's go back to here let's just talk about our points we knew when an x is naught y was 1 we also knew that when x was a half sorry when x was 1 let's try again when x was 1 y was a half and when x was minus 1 y was 2 now do you agree that we could actually just realize that we can swap these values so this number is going to be 1 0 a half 1 and 2 minus 1 let's see if that works so when x is 1 y is 0 when x is a half, y is 1, 1. When x is a half, y is 1. And when x is 2, y is minus 1. Yes, that looks right. So there is our log graph now. That is our log graph. Okay. And we could have substituted values in. We could have said, okay, fine. We know, let's just test it. Let's set x equal half. So then we've got log a half base a half which we know is 1 Ta -da! which is perfect then if we let x equal to 2 then we would end up with minus 1 and if x equals 1 is always 0 so we have this beautiful log graph where we've got y is equal to log x base a half excellent and you will notice this time that the x, the y-axis is the asymptote, so therefore x equals 0 is the asymptote. So the domain and range are actually going to swap like we've seen before. The domain now is going to be x has got to be greater than 0, for x is an element of real values. And y has just going to be any element of real values for the range. Okay, not too bad here. Hey? So there you go. And remember that you have an axis of symmetry which is going to be your y equals x line. So your y equals x line is your axis of symmetry. And that grade 12 is your exponential and logarithmic functions. Please go practice, make sure you know how to convert between the two, understand that the domain and range are swap, and please go make sure you understand and can apply the log laws. Have a great day.